Hello and welcome to this video about one device that I got some weeks ago from one Australian um, designer, engineer, inventor, uh, Eric Fu. And here is the device that I got from him. And that's called IO Respirator and the company's Aim Well. Uh, so maybe I can put website name and so on so that you can find them. But the device uh, here is uh, actually the respirator looks like this and what it does have it has here parts which allows um, to do some measurements during briefing briefing exercises or briefing in normal conditions so if I put here maybe I can put just a couple of models to show you so that would be a part which has uh, actually a lot of electronics and I'm going to explain how it works maybe shortly, just a second, give me a little bit of time. So if I have this device and I can do similar thing on the opposite side, so the device would look like I have here another part like this and what you can do, you can pair this uh, electronic model, there are electronic models in both parts, with your cell phone and then what you do next you can attach it to your body and so when you start briefing here on your cell phone you would be able to see the graph which showing airflow for your inhalation and exhalation actually in real time so and the device provides like extremely valuable data so it shows uh, uh, let me think first what we I think respiratory frequency at the very top then minute uh, volume, minute volume or volume ventilation. So how much air we require in one minute, and uh, later would be tidal volume, which is measured with each breath. So you basically see with each breath how much is your tidal volume, uh, and later would be some other parameters such as uh, in, long, the length of inspiration, the length of expiration, and both pauses after inhale and after exhale. They are all given as like in, in seconds, so that's what device calculates. And that's, that's, I found, just like being extremely useful information for briefing retraining. And I can explain here how it would work, uh, be, be it, for example, for bodega practitioners, for students, or for DIY learning uh, students. It's, uh, there are many kind of cases when this device would be extremely useful to quantify briefing retraining. So one of them would be, of course, like uh, I use myself, let's say, another device which is called Capnometer. Uh, it was years ago and I use it, use it. It's like uh, you get this Capnogram, but then you realize that, for example, if a person breathing with chest, the Capnogram has a spike and end tidal CO2 actually does not reflect the real alveolar CO2 level, does not reflect the CO2 level in the body as well. So therefore, it's kind of uh, uh, not so useful because of the information that it provides uh, does not actually has very good correlation and in certain ranges when people switch chest to diaphragm and back uh, different types of breathing it actually pr could provide a misleading data which I already wrote in the past about. Now this device is entirely different because uh, it again measures for example mean ventilation tidal volume in real time and that allows us to use it uh, again like in many different situations I already kind of thought myself and suggested to Eric like all these type of situations uh, when this device can be used for briefing retraining in particular so let us for example start with uh, thinking about the CP test because CP test even though like for experienced people <laughs> for experienced students is very simple and easy thing for somebody who starts <coughs> briefing retraining <clears throat> I know that uh, most people we would probably making many mistakes. Uh, probably most people would make a mistake when we do the CP test the first time. We you know, we do the test. Some very few students may even like cheat later. You know, we may have take deep breath before doing the CP test, for example, or we overdo the test. But in all these situations, actually, this device is able to track this uh, abnormal kind of very, uh, manipulations of breath uh, really easily. Why? For example, if a person takes big breath, 
we are supposed to exhale when starting the CP test. So if we take deep, big breath, you immediately see on the graph that actually the graph goes up. And so we start breath holding would be a horizontal line later again on, on your cell phone, showing that we started the breath holding uh, at the increased level of volume in the lungs, meaning that we took inhalation before the test. Or I described another kind of way how people can manipulate and get better results for the CP test is we overdo the test, let's say two, three, five seconds, we get a better number, maybe to impress themselves, to impress the teachers or other people. And uh, this device would easily notice this as well because you can see the graph, how much it, uh, how it would look like the pattern, the chart before the test, and then you can easily compare it you know, just on yourself and how it looks like after the test. So therefore, you see the device allows uh, kind of easily to uh, see if students measure the CP test correctly. So that's one advantage. Now that probably would be relatively small in comparison with another huge uh, kind of uh, uh, benefit of this device which can be discovered if we think about how people practice, for example, reduced briefing. So when you students start to learn reduced briefing, can we show on the diagram like that's how I believe Dr. Buteyka taught it uh, uh, during probably the last decade of his teaching that when people have certain briefing pattern, and I often show it on diagram, you can see in many of my videos uh, this diagram, what we do for reduced briefing, we reduce our ventilation or the tidal volume by about 5-10% uh, to get light air hunger. And this is the initial stage of learning, the most important, again, single briefing exercise in the Bottega method is uh, shallow briefing or so-called reduced briefing. So how we can uh, quantify, how we can measure that we reduce the breath by about 5-10%. Well, with this device, it's actually extremely easy because it gives you exact numbers, how much is minute ventilation and how much is tidal. Tidal volume kind of a bit tricky thing because uh, it would be variable from a person, but what is the purpose, main kind of goal of reduced briefing exercise? We reduce our breath and that means we reduce our ventilation by about 5-10% and that creates light level of air hunger. So the device is able to track this very, very well. And my impression uh, was that all these kind of key numbers that I already mentioned, which device is, can measure, uh, is uh, respiratory frequency or breathing rate, minute ventilation and tidal volume are measured with uh, extremely high accuracy. I, I don't know exact numbers, but there would be probably at the range of maybe the mistake could be, I don't know, one, two percent, probably like very, very small. You would not like tiny, tiny changes in your breath it would pick up immediately these variations in the breath. And uh, therefore, again, in this type of situation, as let's say if we want to quantify or measure reduced breathing, this device is extremely valuable. Now, also at later stages, because normally students, uh, when they progress with their breathing retraining, they learn how to practice uh, reduced breathing with moderate level of air hunger. And usually I would say, uh, I say to my students that, okay, we now reduce our breath by about 20-30%. Again, 20-30%, I can put it on a chart, on a graph, and this is what I do when I, for example, teach a class. But this device allows us to measure this exactly, so 20-30%. And I believe that would be numbers which you would get with the device as well if you start measuring uh, sessions with your moderate level of air hunger and finally when students go to very uh, strong level of air hunger then uh, you would reduce your breath probably by about 40-50 percent so the people get again when we reduce your breath nearly two times we get very strong level of air hunger and that's of course something for advanced students already and the device again can easily measure these uh, changes in breathing uh, being an extremely useful uh, tool for breathing retraining. Plus, of course, maybe when people practice meditation or do some other activities, this device can be also used. In addition to that, it has a, a chance, you can hear there is a kind of switch which allows to change the resistance. And therefore, uh, you can also have similar effects when you practice, let's say, with different resist resistive devices. 
particularly against having resistance on inhalation, and this is what, what it is designed for, to create different uh, levels of resistance by changing, uh, by again moving with switch here. So, uh, therefore, I would say that, uh, to my knowledge, there is, there, are, there is no better device currently to measure uh, how people practice uh, Buteyka briefing exercise, how we practice reduced briefing, in particular, and how we do CP test, then this device, because that's just a kind of fantastic addition to briefing retraining and to the Buteyka method. And so I'm really grateful for, to Eric Fu, uh, again, the person from Australia who sent me this device, and I believe it will take its place in briefing retraining so that people can kind of quantify and uh, analyze the results of their briefing using this uh, kind of scientific instrument, scientific tool, which is... Uh, again, like uh, these two models, we are full of electronics. We not only measure, uh, I was surprised, I like, was looking at the uh, type of information I get. We can also provide here information about <coughs> humidity of air. We provide information about air temperature. And you can measure also <coughs> different parameters which are extremely useful for people with asthma. So air flow and various expiratory uh, velocity flow, factors related to, again, presence of asthma, degree of inflammation in the airways could be measured with, using this device as well. So, yeah, that's just, again, like, uh, uh, extremely good addition to briefing retraining and useful tool to quantify briefing retraining and do some other, again, tests related to uh, Buteyka method and retraining of our breath.